What's up A to Zen lifers and welcome back to my channel. My name is Marissa and I'm a minimalist who loves to keep things simple, but I'm also a mom who wants to share the joy and magic of Christmas alongside my kids and my husband. And since this week I've been prepping a few things for Christmas, I thought I would bring you along with me and show you how we celebrate Christmas as a minimalist family of four. I also ran a Q&A on Instagram asking for your questions related to minimalism and simplifying Christmas, and I got a ton of great ones. So let's cozy up and we can chat about how we decorate, what we got our kids for Christmas, and I can give you one or two minimalist gift wrapping hacks and more. Let's kick things off with a question from Shannon27C who asked, what's each family member's favorite Christmas tradition and are there any same or different ones? Thanks for the question, Shannon, and make sure that you guys stick around until the end of the video because I'm gonna wait until the boys get home from school so I can ask everyone all at once and I'll share that towards the end. And in the meantime, I would love it if those of you who are watching right now could give this video a like and share with me your favorite Christmas tradition. What is something that you do that just lights you up with joy? I look forward to reading your answers and let's dive in. Natalia Coronessa asks, how do you decorate your home as minimalists and do you reuse the same decorations every year? So we purchased our home in 2020, and that is the year that we also had to purchase ornaments and decorations for our Christmas tree. And so this will be the third year, and yes, we have been continuing to reuse the same ornaments and decorations over and over. We do have a few ornaments that we brought with us from the United States, like the bird ornaments that are my boys' favorites. The main focal point of our Christmas decorating is really about the Christmas tree. So going to get a Christmas tree is one of our favorite family traditions. And what we do is we head to one of the Christmas tree markets in our area, and we work together to try to find the very best Christmas tree. Although some of us have different ideas about what makes a good Christmas tree, let's just say. How are you picking your trees, Didi? What's your criteria for a good tree? Um, that it's small. That it's small? Isn't this too small? No. Last year, my husband felt that the Christmas tree was a bit too big, so this year we were trying to get a slightly smaller Christmas tree, which I guess is why Didi said he was looking for a small Christmas tree. My husband's favorite thing to do is put the lights up. This is the star that goes on top of our Christmas tree, and it actually projects snowflakes onto the ceiling, which the boys love. And they have a lot of fun helping us hang up the ornaments themselves. I would just like to point out this fantastic rattan tree skirt that we have. I get a lot of questions and compliments about this, and I think it's so practical compared to, like, say, a cloth tree skirt like I used to have when I was growing up, because it really stays stable underneath the Christmas tree. And it looks awesome, too. So I actually found this outside on the street the other day. And normally I say, don't bring things home that you find on the street, which is something that I've struggled with in the past. But in this case, this is an Ikea, like light candle holder thing that I had already wanted. And I also was imagining in my mind, where is this thing going to go? My husband had been wanting to have a candle holder for the balcony in the summer because the mosquitoes can be really, really bad. So we were thinking, oh, we should have a candle holder to hold citronella candles that we could keep out there. And so I like this because I can move it around easily. It's exactly the aesthetic that I wanted. And when I'm not using it, I plan to put it in the kitchen on top of the cabinets because I feel like it's really like high and empty up there. So it just adds a little bit of something. I just love it. It's so pretty, isn't it? I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Ooh, my husband also loves hanging the twinkle lights on the balcony. Marie Mika asks, where do you store all of your Christmas decorations? So we actually store our Christmas decorations in what I like to call our Silence of the Lambs basement. We don't have a regular basement because we live in a multi-family flat or apartment house, I guess you would call it. And so my husband goes down to the basement and grabs the boxes that we use to store the things inside. That's where we keep the rattan tree skirt and our boxes of ornaments and lights and other things. And I do my best to repurpose things that I already have for wrapping the lights up and things like storing it inside. Oh, and there's also the base, the tree base as well. So as far as our Christmas tree, because we buy a real Christmas tree every year, that means that we don't have to worry about storing a Christmas tree. We did have an artificial Christmas tree in the US, but here we prefer these. And then they get put on the street and recycled at the end of the holiday season. 
This person said, no questions. For the first time, we won't have a Christmas tree in our home. It will be special for us. Good for you. I totally agree that you don't need a Christmas tree to have a wonderful Christmas. Kimberly's Child Bach asks, what experiences decor have you let go of because it wasn't serving you or your family? Ooh, this is such a good question. The holidays are always a little bit hard for me because my mom died like right at Thanksgiving. Sometimes her death anniversary is on Thanksgiving. And I've lost so many family members that sometimes the holidays can really be a reminder for how many people um, I'm missing. So I found a lot of times when I was getting older, what I would try to do is I would try to decorate like my dad decorated. We had like huge, ginormous, like life-size sleds and reindeers and stuff made out of lights. And we had huge, ginormous Christmas trees. I specifically remember on top of our fireplace mantle, he would put down like the cotton padding that looks like snow so he would lay it all across the top of the wood mantle and then he had this intricate ceramic village and he had all of these houses and he would decorate the whole mantle across and around it was like a huge wraparound fireplace and he would decorate it with these ceramic houses and things and hang stockings and, and all of this so he was always someone who went all out. So I found a lot of times when I was getting older, what I would try to do is I would try to decorate like my dad decorated because it reminded me of the past and I wanted to hold on to that. But what I realized when I did end up collecting all of these things is that the magic just wasn't there for me anymore. The magic was in the time that I spent with the people that I loved. And that's something that I can't get back. It was very freeing to finally let go of those and realize that actually I don't really care about decorating that much. So now what I try to do is really focus on creating like fun experiences and traditions with my husband and my sons and just focusing on the magic of being together. I will say that I have some ornaments that I kept from my past. I've talked about before how my family was crazy about collectibles and we had like all of the stereotypical collectibles in the 90s. And I had every single Barbie and Barbie ornament from probably 1982 to 1998 or so. And I ended up getting rid of all of them except for two ornaments that I kept one was from my great grandmother and one was from my grandmother and they still have the signatures from when they filled it out for me and gave it to me under the Christmas tree for those years. And so I think it's not about having a lot of things, but keeping the things that mean the most to you and letting go of the rest. And also my husband and I let go of the practice of giving each other gifts. And I'll talk a little bit more about gifts later, but basically we don't get each other anything for the holidays anymore and just get gifts for the boys. Okay, so the next question is, what's on your table at Christmas dinner? We eat Chinese food for Christmas dinner. I never really cared for the Christmas dinners that we had. So in our family, it was like ham. I more enjoy the Thanksgiving food because I like turkey more. So the main way that my husband's family celebrates together is by eating food together and we typically eat Chinese cuisine. And in the past, we've had it at my mother-in-law's house and she was cooking a lot. And we've had it in the past where we did potlucks and everyone bring like two dishes. And this year, what we're doing is we're just keeping it super simple and we're actually ordering Chinese food from a local restaurant that we found where they serve my husband's local cuisine, which is really, really, really special for them. And that cuts the work down for everyone in the family and then we just have more time to relax and enjoy and have fun together. Something really interesting that my mother-in-law did this year is she actually prepared some strips of meat and hung it on our balcony to dry and cure and then everyone in the family is going to get some once it's all prepared. But that was really cool for me to watch because this is something that they used to do back in the mountains. I thought that was something really special for our kids and my husband and I to share with my mother-in-law. So we'll see how it turns out. I think pretty much the rest of the questions were about gifts. So now we're gonna go get out the gifts from where I've been hiding them and we can wrap gifts together and I'll answer your questions. I got a question from Conflict of Interest who asked, what do you want for Christmas? And like I said, my husband and I no longer exchange Christmas gifts. And we also decided with my husband's family that we would not exchange gifts amongst them and ourselves as well. 
Um, because we're all adults now pretty much, except for my sons and they have two younger cousins. So we just keep the present giving for those little guys and don't worry so much about the adults anymore. That's just what we all came to the decision for. Awkward chair. So this is a bag that I repurposed. It was one of my purse bags and now I use it to store fabrics that I'm going to show you how to use to wrap gifts. And I also have a hack for you that can help you cut down on needing to own so many rolls of gift wrapping paper. So stick around and I'm gonna answer your questions about gifting and what we give for gifts and how to wrap gifts. And I'll share all that stuff with you. Of course, one of the top questions that we got asked was what we got our kids for Christmas. So I also want to refer you guys to some of these gift guides that I've created before with my ideas about the best kinds of gifts to get for kids and minimalist families. So check the links down below for that. We're starting off with the puzzles, which I think is an amazing thing to do as a family. And Didi got a fish puzzle because he is obsessed with fishes and Guga is obsessed with Pokemon. So that is what I got him. I also got a puzzle board holder that seems high quality and I got this to help us keep our puzzle pieces together and intact because I know when I was growing up my cats always ruined all of my puzzles and those rolling ones never worked well for me. So this one has little interior compartments that you can pull out and use it to do sections of the puzzle. So I'm hoping that this can really help us keep our puzzle together and also allow us to put it away when we need to. There were a lot of questions about what our Christmas budget was and how many gifts we get our kids. And we don't keep a specific budget, but I will say that we spend less than the average person does on Christmas, but we do tend to go for quality over quantity for toys. And I also try to make sure they get an even amount of toys. There are toys for sharing, but also individual toys. So I try to make sure that they have the same amount between the two. Rebecca Reynolds asks, are we for or against sharing Amazon wish lists with family to make sure you get stuff that you actually want or need? And I think that's a 100% for. I just think that that's a conversation that you need to open up well before Christmas, especially if this is something pretty new for your family. And that's something that I talked about in my last video with tips on how to have a minimalist Christmas. So make sure you go and watch that video if you haven't already. The most expensive thing that we got this year was the Nintendo Switch, which I grabbed at a really good price for a bundle along with the Mario Kart and the controllers. But we really look forward to playing this together as a family. Okay, so one gift wrapping hack that I have for you, I never buy anything other than Christmas paper. But what I do is I buy this recycled Christmas paper that then has the inside is just totally brown. So that way when it's time for people's birthdays throughout the year, like when my kids want to go to their friend's birthday parties, what I do is I wrap it inside out and then I would just use colorful ribbon if I want to, to put around the outside. So that way I only need to keep Christmas paper on me, but I still have paper that works well for the other seasons as well. Okay, so that's one minimalist gift wrapping hack that I have for you. And the other one I'm going to show you is really good for people who want to have a zero waste Christmas. And that's the practice of using fabric to wrap your gifts. And in Japanese, this actually has a name, it's called furoshiki. That's how I learned about it initially. I was actually a little bit worried because these are muslin wraps from when my boys were baby babies. They're the Aiden and Anais muslin wraps that I used to use to swaddle them when they were so tiny. And I thought I would be a little bit too see-through, but I practiced it with the darkest thing that I had, which was the Minecraft, and you can't see through it at all. So let me show you how to do fabric wrapping yourself. Now, I by no means consider myself a fabric wrapping or zero waste expert, but here's how I go about doing it. So first I lay out the fabric on the floor and then I place the object that I want to wrap inside of it, catty corner to the corners. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the corner that has the tag because this has a tag. If you have fabric that doesn't have a tag, you can start wherever you want. And I'm gonna fold that corner across and tuck it underneath the object that I'm wrapping. And then I go to the next side across from the side that I just used and wrap it over and around and tuck it again. Now what you can do is you can either tie it at that one side or if you have a lot of extra fabric like I do, 
you can go crisscross applesauce and then tie it around on the other side and that's going to give you a nice secure snug fit and then all you have to do is kind of tuck in the extra fabric pieces here and there to make it look as pretty as you want to and you're all set while we wrap the rest of the gifts, I thought I would take a moment to answer Ginny Banker's question about how to deal with your kids who get a few special gifts when their friends are getting mountains of gifts. And I think it's important here to acknowledge your kids' feelings and be understanding, but at the same time, be open and communicate that all families are different and how your family really wants to keep things simple for Christmas and in other areas. And that gives you more flexibility and freedom in other ways like being able to afford a nice vacation together or having more free time to spend together. Also reinforce with your children that it's important for them to be grateful because if someone isn't grateful for the things that they already have, they're probably not going to be grateful when they get more either. I've also found it very helpful to read books like The Grinch with my kids and point out that it wasn't the presence that actually mattered at all in that story. And we also recently started watching the Harry Potter movies and I really pointed out to them how ungrateful Dudley was when he got all of those presents for his birthday, 38 presents, wasn't it? But he still wasn't satisfied. And I just pointed that out to my kids and I was like, isn't that sad that he has so much and Harry Potter has nothing and yet he's still ungrateful and dissatisfied. So I think looking for these examples in pop culture too can really, you know, hit home with your kids. Don't forget to be a role model yourself and reject that keeping up with the Joneses mindset and model good behavior because your kids are always watching. And before I mentioned that we always give the same number of gifts. So even when we have gifts that are shared, I make sure if I get individual presents that I get an individual present for each of them so that they still feel like they got the same. Even if the price isn't the same, just having the same overall quantity is great. All right, if you've made it this far, it's time for us to talk about which family members' holiday traditions are their absolute favorites. And please give this video a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And here is what each family member had to say.